as we ask who designed that kind of division of talking about poor and low wealth people. And we know as far back as 1968, uh, Republicans like Buchanan designed a system to divide the country, particularly in the South. They called it positive polarization. But in 1965, Dr. King said that the reason they do it is because the poor and low wealth people come together, black and white and across racial lines. They could fundamentally shift the country. So, so that's the question, who benefits? The fact of the matter is, when you look at the data, poor and low wealth people make up almost 30% of the electorate. There are 140 million poor and low wealth people in this country. There are 64 million poor and low wealth people who are eligible to vote. They hold the power block the key to transforming our elections. And we really shouldn't be surprised about Texas and Georgia and South Carolina. For years, a lot of us have been saying these states aren't red states. They were low voter turnout states, voter suppression states, and unorganized states. But when poor and low wealth people like what's happening now with COVID are coming together, you're seeing all these new voters come in that haven't voted. And it's changing the look of the electorate. And we really don't know, Josh, we really don't know what it would look like in America. We've been saying for years, if 60% of the people vote or 70% of the vote uh, would vote. What we know is based on who hasn't voted. But if you change the electorate, that's where transformation happens. Rev, talk about what works in terms of getting lower income people mobilized to vote. I think one thing that I have learned from talking to all kinds of people is low income does not mean low intelligence. These are people who know what issues matter and know what government means for them but in terms of turning that into actual voting, what works? Well, first of all, that is, like you're right, the most insulting thing. The fact of the matter is poor and low-income people actually vote more progressive. Uh, it's the volume. And how do you get the volume out? Three things we did a study called Unleashing the Power of Poor and Low-Wealth Voters. Three things the voters said. Number one, they need to hear their issues. They need to hear about living wages, and they need to hear about health care for all life issues. Number two, they need time off. Uh, they, sometimes they can't get off work or transportation. Number three, voter suppression blocks them. And so one of the things that, that poor and low wealth people are starting to say is, we've not been listened to, now we're gonna make people hear us. So in our movement, we develop an agenda, an agenda, not just poor and low wealth, an agenda. That's an agenda that would help all Americans. You know, if you raise the living wage, to $15 an hour, 49 million people would immediately rise up out of poverty and it would put 300 and 60 plus billion dollars into the economy. When you begin to show that a moral budget is also good for the economy and lifting folk from the bottom actually helps everybody, that changes, that changes the whole attitude that people have around voting. And that's what's happening now all over this country, Dr. So people are saying, as that clip showed, we're not going anywhere because poor people represent everybody. 66 million poor low wealth people are white. 26 million are black, but that 26 million black is 61% of black people. So you, you cannot ignore this issue. In 15 states, poor and low wealth people, if they just voted at one to 19% higher, they could, they could overcome the marginal victories in the presidential election in 2016. No matter how high or low income you may think you are, if you have a vote, you have something priceless. That's right. And I'm fascinated to see how that may affect the electorate also on Election Day. Reverend William Barber of the Poor People's Campaign. Reverend, thank you very much. Thank you so much. God bless.